Baba, thank you so much for uh, accepting my invite today. Uh, I'm so happy to have the opportunity to chat with you. Uh, would you mind telling us a little bit about your background, what you do at Intel in your education? Yeah. Um, I joined Intel in 1984 uh, after getting my PhD in uh, solid state electronics, mm -hmm. which is basically semiconductors. Uh, I was an engineer working in DRAM division in the quality and reliability department. And I have basically moved to the ranks and currently I am managing uh, assembly and test technology development as a corporate vice president uh, in Antal. Great, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, what would you think the biggest factor that made you so successful in your career? I think the, the biggest factor uh, for me uh, has been choosing positions that I really have passion for. I really like the job. You know, it's, uh, every day I got up in the morning, I was excited about going to work because I really liked what I was working on. Um, and I did not pick any positions that was basically quote unquote good for my career, but I didn't have a passion for. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably the most important uh, mm -hmm. item that I can think of. Yes. So being passion the number one, what are your habits that makes you successful? Um, some of the you know, uh, you know, when, when I come to work every day, mm -hmm. I think of three things in, in a priority order. First, what I'm doing is good for Intel. What I'm doing is good for the people who work for me or with me. Mm -hmm. And number three, what's good for me in mm -hmm. that priority order. Mm -hmm. So that really helps me guide my habits. Then from other kind of habits is that, uh, you know, uh, if you can get something done right away, just get it done. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, don't wait. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, just just get things done, you know, right. quickly. Right. You're not yeah. procrastinating. No procrastination. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So among those three factors, looking back to your career, would you think that you have made any mistake or anything that you would have done differently looking back? Oh, I've made many mistakes, so uh, that's, uh, that's part of the game. Uh, the question is that recognizing that you make mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, what I mean by that is be honest with yourself when you make mistakes. It's almost impossible not to make them. Mm -hmm. uh, the worst thing you can do is come up with justification that you know that had nothing to do with you uh, somebody else caused me to make this mistake blame it on others mm -hmm. uh, that if you do that that means there's no learning from the mistakes mm -hmm. so be honest with yourself mm -hmm. you know when you make a mistake yes. understand what happened um, and accept it um, and learn from it and move on you know? yes don't let it bug you down. Yeah. So owning it, taking the lesson, and moving on. Yeah. And uh, what was the hardest decision you had to make along the way? You know, I can't point to uh, a single decision. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned that, uh, you know, when opportunity comes up, you have to seize the moment. Yes. Uh, and I know there are times that I had hesitated mm -hmm. and I regretted it. Uh, when I haven't hesitated, um, you know, I, you know, those are the good decisions. So I think if the opportunity knocks on your door, seize the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, don't wait, just seize it. Yes, yes. Sometimes what I see in the field or uh, elsewhere in the academia is. Sometimes people tend to wait and look for the perfect uh, conditions to take a decision. 
what I'm hearing is like perhaps uh, we need to seize, seize the moment and take the decisions on a timely manner. Absolutely, because you don't know when the next opportunity is going to knock on your door. Yes. So, uh, and you know, there's a, when I talk about opportunity, mm -hmm. there's no opportunity that is perfect. If it's uh, 60, 70 percent good, mm -hmm. that's that's as close to perfection as you can get. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, if you're waiting for perfection, then, mm -hmm. then you will say no to every single opportunity. Yes, yes. So I want to give a small example to that, just mm -hmm. happened today. Um, so Babek being the vice president, um, his availability was today. And uh, if I were to wait for the perfect opportunity to have my tripods and microphones, I may have missed this uh, amazing moment of uh, having the chance to interview you. So um, I think I can take that small example and apply yeah. it to everywhere. If it's 60, 70%, right? Go with it. Yeah. yeah. And you know, this is uh, the reason <laughs> I responded to you at the time. I said, okay, let's, Perfect. you know, if you can get it done, get it done. Yes. Just do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, rather than saying that, come back and see me in three weeks. Yes. Yeah. I really appreciate that. So, uh, what is the advice that you may give to the like younger professionals, perhaps if they are early in their careers, to be successful like you, to go step up in their careers? You know, it's uh, it's really straightforward. Mm -hmm. uh, if you come to work with the same three principles I told you, yes, in terms of priority, mm -hmm. what's good for your company, what's good for the people that they work for you, mm -hmm. work with you. Mm -hmm. you know, what's good for me. Mm -hmm. That's one very, very important advice. Uh, number two is do the best you can in whatever job you have. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, um, opportunities will knock on your door. That means that I'm going to do the best job I can in whatever position I have. And opportunities will knock on my door. Somebody will notice me. And you know, maybe they don't notice you right away, but on average, you get noticed. Mm -hmm. And you got to love what you're doing. If you don't, you will fail. Mm -hmm. Nobody can succeed in doing stuff that they don't like to do. Yes. Absolutely. So, if you were to start this all over again, what would you do differently? You know, I try not to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, there are probably maybe one or two decisions that I made mm -hmm. that I regret. Mm -hmm. um, one of them was around seizing the moment. And I think that I just choked a little bit. Um, that's the only thing that I probably regret some. Mm -hmm. uh, but who knows what would have happened otherwise. Yes. So, so I, you know, it's you can't worry about the past, exactly, because you can't change it. You can't do anything about it. Learn from it and look forward. Mm -hmm. And along the same lines, Babek, I sometimes see that the decisions perhaps we could have taken differently, we see them in terms of the grass is greener on the other side. Yeah. And perhaps it may have been ended up actually worse. Like the things unknown, we tend to think, I don't know if you would agree, yeah. but would end up better or greener, but perhaps it was not. Yeah, there is this thing about unintended consequences that we don't consider as often, excuse me, as often as we should. Mm -hmm. uh, usually when the grass looks greener, yes. is most of the time we're not looking, thinking about how the unintended consequences of a decision mm -hmm. that would have potentially make it worse if mm -hmm. we had done done it the other way. Yes. Um, it's a it's a human being. We always think that our life is harder than everybody else's is much simpler. Yes. Yes. So uh, <laughs> that's part of the human being Absolutely. behavior. Absolutely. So, uh, if you were not an engineer, what career would be most speaking to you? Well, I wanted to be an artist, uh, but 
but uh, I, you know, it, it sounds like a good thing. I, I wish I had the creativity, um, you know, to, to be able to be an artist, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but I, unfortunately, I don't have uh, uh, any of the skills mm -hmm. to be a good artist. Mm -hmm. So um, if I could have, I probably would have pursued it more. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one thing. Yes. You know, the other thing that I have uh, really enjoyed uh, over time is uh, is reading about philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that I would have probably would have wanted to study. More. Right. Awesome. So, uh, besides uh, work at Intel, can we uh, know a little bit about your hobbies? What do you like doing? Do you like being in Oregon? I know it's rainy nine, nine, nine months out of 12, but <laughs> how well, do you spend your time? Well, you get used to it after uh, being here for a long time, like me. Yes. Uh, and weather is not as much a factor. Mm -hmm. you got to go about doing you know, whatever you want to do, almost regardless of the weather, you know, most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to exercise, so I have a habit of daily exercise every day. Mm -hmm. um, I make sure that I fit it in my schedule, mm -hmm. that I do it. Uh, and actually, I reserve a time for it on my calendar, yes. so I can get it done. Of course, you know, we can't, sometimes I have to break it, but it's less often mm -hmm. that uh, I'll do that. Uh, and I really enjoy being outside, mm -hmm. so doing a lot of hiking, you know, skiing, you know, uh, some physical activity. Yes. Uh, the other thing I really like to do is cooking. Oh. Okay. So, so I enjoy cooking, and, you know, mm -hmm. so that's almost a, like a hobby for me. That's great. So, any specific cuisine or...? You know, I try anything. I try to, if I go to a restaurant and I eat something that I like, mm -hmm. I try to recreate it by, by the taste and the looks of it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do Middle Eastern cooking and recently I really like Oriental cooking. Mm -hmm. so, That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I actually share a similar interest with you in that sense. I um, tried some Thai mango sticky rice the uh -huh. other day. It almost feels like traveling. It clears yeah. the mind. It's like meditative. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially when you're an engineer. You, I mean, we spend most of our time sitting behind a computer, Absolutely. typing, and you know, the product of our hard work takes years before you can see it. Mm -hmm. uh, cooking is something that sort of fulfills that. You know, you spend a few hours and you have a product that, that you can show for, you know, prepare a meal, put it on the table, and mm -hmm. have your family enjoy it. Yes. So it's almost uh, anal analog to like actually working as an engineer. You need to yes. have the patience, you need to have the ingredients, maybe equals to the technical skills, yeah. putting the ingredients and then here's your product. <laughs> yes. Um, so to give a final message to uh, people who are listening to us, uh, can we say any individual who works hard, who believes in themselves, can actually be successful if they believe in themselves and put the work? Yeah. If you if you do the best you can in a job that you love, mm -hmm. you'll be successful. Mm -hmm. um, you never know how the opportunities will knock on your door. Yes. But it will all the time. Yes. Have faith. Yes. Well, uh, I really enjoyed uh, speaking with you today. Thank you so much for your time. If you have any final message you would like to give, please. Yeah, give it's, uh, you know, uh, enjoy the ride. Mm -hmm. uh, you will make mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, own them and learn from them. Mm -hmm. But don't let them bark you down. Yes. Yeah. Move on. Move on. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you.